Hey, it's Biddy Penny and Young Z. May the fourth be with you. Okay, guys, so I have two cards I'm making today. I'm actually only going to use one of these stamp sets, but I've had these in my stash for a long time because our family are big Star Wars fans. All right, I grabbed some Canson XL watercolor paper and I'm cutting it down to four by six. I was able to get four panels that I would put on five by seven cards with the way that I cut these. And, um, well, we're just going to jump into our first card, and I'd like to introduce my special guest, Young Z. Hey. Hi! <laughs> okay, guys, I had to call in the expert, because as much as I love Star Wars, I just don't know. There's still so much I don't know, and my son is virtually an expert. So I brought him in to talk about the scene that I was inspired by today. Um, I can tell you that this is Princess Leia. And I'm going to let him explain the rest. So, Enzi, can you tell everyone a little bit about this movie scene? Well, in the movie scene, uh, Luke finds a hologram message on R2-D2 earlier in the movie saying that Princess Leia basically needs help. So he brings it to Obi-Wan because it mentions him in the uh the video and <clears throat> he brings it to him and they play the rest of the message and they figure out they have to go to a planet called Alderaan so in the movie at least in the first half they try to go and find Alderaan because there's rebels and like good guys there that are trying to defeat the bad guys I've always really appreciated that the good guys in Star Wars are considered the rebels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the bad guys are... The Empire. The Empire. At least in these movies. There's multiple different enemies and people in all these movies because there's nine of them. But in the original movies, it was just the Empire versus the rebels. Mm-hmm. So both of the cards today are from the same movie. They're from A New Hope. Which is, this is one that, you know, I'd like to say that I'm more familiar with because it's the older ones that I grew up on. Mm -hmm. However, I seem to be more familiar now with the newer movies because they're the ones that most recent. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny. I was making these cards and I wanted to do a voiceover and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do this as much justice without you. So... You were my only hope for this voiceover. I'm so glad you joined me. <laughs> yeah. So here I'm just watercoloring in a background, you guys. Um, so Princess Leia is a hologram from yeah. R2-D2 that he's shining. Mm -hmm. Because she recorded it on R2 and then gave the message to him. Mm -hmm. So he has it recorded and he can just put it anywhere. And in this scene that they are on, they just have like a, uh, I think it's like a hologram table, mm -hmm. or maybe it's just a normal table, but sometimes in Star Wars they have like the uh, hologram be projected onto a table. Uh -huh. It's like a flat base. Yeah. So it won't, you know, curve or get like covered in something or something like that. Well, when I was sketching Obi-Wan here, um, I really, that right arm is just far too short, you guys. Uh, but I knew that I just needed to press on. I will say as a card maker, when we're, when I'm making cards like this, sometimes I can feel really far away from my end goal when I'm first getting started like this. I feel like, oh gosh. Bitty Penny, I don't know if you're going to be able to pull this one off, and it feels rough and really sketchy, um, and I mean sketchy like artist sketchy, not like that dude's sketchy, but anyways, um, yeah, I just knew I would be able, even though his arm's a little short, I would be able to fix it as I went, so um, 
you'll see how I resolve that. And I was very pleased with this card. I'm really excited about it. Um, I've been stocking kindred stamps lately. They make so many different like movie character based stamps and I just, I'm into it. I'm loving it. I wish um, I had a big old fat gift card for their shop. <laughs> All right. So when I was growing up, my name is Toby. So one of my nicknames that I've had since I was at least five is Toby Wan. So all the, not all the kids, but a lot of kids used to call me Toby Wan, Kenobi. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's okay. I could be, it could be worse. Yeah. Okay. It's better than having like a nickname after like. I don't know, Porky Pig or something, you know, could be worse, could be worse Mm -hmm. than have being, having a nickname based on Obi-Wan. Yeah. Mm. I'm pretty excited about the new series. How about you? Yeah, I am. It's coming out in, I think late May. It was delayed by a couple of days, but that might just be because they have a different TV show that's going to be on Disney Plus or whatever on that day that it was originally going to be released. So I think that's why it's delayed by a couple of days or just something happened with the production of the the TV show. Mm, Yeah. Or something happened. Probably marketing. Yeah. Marketing stuff. Yeah. I am really excited about it. I love Mm -hmm. Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. I'm so glad they were able to bring him back Mm -hmm. and have him reprise the role. So I think that's really exciting. We've been really enjoying all the Star Wars series on um, Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Disney Plus has been amazing, mm-hmm. I think. Because they have multiple sections for all kinds of franchises like Marvel, Star Wars. Uh, they have um, Pixar and just all kinds of Disney movies and stuff like that. Yeah, I love it that they even have, like, the old movies that I grew up on. So, like, I've been able to show you guys, like, Swiss Family Robinson and Freaky Friday and all these different movies that the classics, as I consider them, that I grew up on. And they have them available. So, that's mm-hmm. really cool. So, since she is a hologram and you guys saw in that video how she was really blue but the setting was really warm, I love that contrast. For me, if I could be like the kind of artist I would love to be, um, I think I would always portray light. I really love paintings and art when I see light shining. It it, I love it when it's shining through trees on people's faces, when it's, you know, um, a feature of the artwork is the light that's shining. And so that was really appealing to me. That's the, why I picked the scene first. Mm-hmm. I will tell you that the second card is much easier, much faster than this one. But with this one, I really did literally have to set the scene. Yeah. I like the detailing. You kind of blurred the background, which they might have done in the film to kind of like, or they do in modern film as well, you kind of blur the background and then focus a lot on the, like, what's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Like the, very the main front. character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they blurred the back, which is sometimes not that noticeable because you're, they put so much, um focus on the stuff in front of you you don't notice that it's really like blurred in the background a little right but and then they sometimes um blur the front and then show something in the background to like reveal something sometimes or just have them walk away from the front and go back like go back and open a door or walk back somewhere so yeah 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 Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going for like I wanted to set the scene but I didn't want to try to get bogged down in the detail Mm -hmm. I really wanted um, just to kind of set the scene back there so I finished that up and then I really needed to help Obi-Wan's arm so I covered it up with you're my only hope Mm -hmm. um, just a sentiment and then I brought in some black ink and I really like 
the detail, how this sets, this kind of does the same thing as what you're talking about. So it mm -hmm. sends the background backwards and it brings more light into the center of the card. Mm -hmm. And I think it really just finishes off the edges. Although I did end up cutting out a die frame for these cards. It also, uh, that scene, when you put darkened it a little, mm -hmm. helps set the tone as well because they're looking for help. And that's a dark time with the Empire ah, that's ruling such everything. A... And then you see the hologram, which is really bright and shining, so... That, that is the hope. Yeah. It kind of sets the tone of what's going on oh, in the scene. Brilliant. Okay. So we're jumping into the second card here. What is this? Uh, it's like a speed car. It's what is this? a <laughs> land speeder. Land they speeder. have it to travel around the deserts of Tatooine. Oh, it's so cool how it like hovers mm -hmm. over the sand. It's like a car, but it doesn't have wheels. Mm -hmm. But a cool thing about the original movie, or a thing about the original movie, a detail, is they, it of course, had to have wheels, but I think they just edited it out. Oh. So that they wouldn't show it later mm -hmm. on. And then what is, <laughs> I had to ask um, Young Z what I was drawing here, because, I don't know, to me it was like a rocket launching pad, but that's not what that is, right? It's like a moisture farming machine, I think. So it like takes the moisture, uh, the hot moisture of the air and on Tatooine, mm -hmm. and it turns it into water, because of course... The Tatooine is a desert planet, so they don't get a lot of water, like, at all. So they have to find other ways to extract and get water and important resources like that. Mm hmm And Luke's family, or his adopted family, is actually moisture farmers. Oh. His un well, not uh, adopted. I forgot, but his uncle and aunt that... Mm -hmm. He has their um, moisture farmers, so which yeah. is something you need in a desert, right? Mm -hmm. Like you gotta have, gotta have that water. Mm -hmm. So again, what was really appealing to me about this scene was the softness of the background. I just loved mm -hmm. the soft, soft, washed out color that I found in one particular photo. Um, of the sand and the sky it was just so soft and I was really drawn to that plus I just love that it had the land speeder in it and you know I just had these two stamps with people facing forward so I kind of had to find scenes where the characters where I thought I could create the scene with them in that stance if you will mm-hmm and uh, I haven't watercolored in a while, so I was really happy to be back watercoloring and creating Love. these scenes. The nice thing about the watercolor is, yeah, it perfectly um, captures that uh, look of the background, especially in some scenes, like when they're racing or going somewhere on Tatooine in multiple of the movies. You can tell in the background, like even sometimes the sand kind of looks like water. Mm. Or it just looks like a lot of wavy and strange, like, lighting and waves back there. And it just looks really cool sometimes. So... The way the background looks in some scenes. That is such a good point. Like, it's kind of like the vapor of the hot air that moves mm -hmm. across the sand and looks mm -hmm. like... You know, when people portray it in film like someone's walking across a hot desert and you see a mirage and they think they see water, but it's really just more sand. Mm -hmm. That's a good comparison. Um, so, ta okay, so guys, like, I had... <laughs> I called it Tatatooney. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And I was like, see how much I need you in this voiceover? <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah. So, help us all pronounce it correctly. Tatooine. Tatooine. It's like the word tattoo mm -hmm. and then een. Like Halloween. So, Very... Tatooine. Ah, oh, there it is. My son 
is exquisite with language. Um, always has been, and it's amazing. You always amaze me. Mm-hmm with your linguistic skills. So I didn't color this one entirely in with you guys because I knew this video would be uh, long enough as it was. I did draw in some details for Luke here. I really wanted um, some more wispiness to his hair. So I kind of grew or drew in a little shag here on the side and um, drew in some lines at the top to really kind of make it that shaggy look. Um, mm -hmm. Because he's in the middle of the desert, so he's not going to be looking the best. <laughs> right, with sand they blowing everywhere. They don't have everywhere. much, so they're going to be dirty and sandy and all over the place. So. so Tatooine is basically his home, right? Kind of his home base? Yeah, it's where he lives for um, most of, not most of his life, but the first uh, couple of years of his life. I think until like he's like a teenager or yeah I think like a teenager like 18 17 something like that I think that's when he goes on his big adventure and goes somewhere but so he, he has had to, to be protected on he, Tatooine uh-huh he has to go away from there to be trained as a Jedi originally he wasn't going to be trained as a Jedi though Obi-Wan the older man uh, did want him to be a Jedi. They all went on mainly a mission to go to Alderaan to save the rebel, the rebels. Mm. So, but on the way, uh, Obi Wan tries to uh, train him. I see. And over the movies, he starts getting more interested in it. Until the next movie, Empire Strikes Back, he starts training. He actually starts training. But in the first movie, he actually isn't even a Jedi. So, okay. And in the second one, technically, I don't really call him a Jedi yet either, because he wasn't even that good of a Jedi, even in the second one. But I guess the Force is strong with him. Yeah, it takes all three of the original movies for him to really become a Jedi. I call him uh, like a full-on Jedi by the end of Return of the Jedi, the third movie, mm -hmm. and the final one of those uh, that trilogy. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed our chit chat. Thank you, son. You're a mm -hmm. blessing to me and to everyone. Thank you. Love you too. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive into Star Wars, A New Hope, a couple of scenes. Mm -hmm. And I hope you enjoyed the artistry of these cards. I know I really enjoyed them. I thank you all for watching my channel. Definitely leave your comments down below and I'll pass them on. See you next time. Bye.